Hello students, here we are going to discuss one question from Indian history theme that has been asked in UPSC mains paper 2023 and the question is related to Indian history and that too from ancient medieval art and culture theme. The question is explain the role of geographical factors towards the development of ancient India. Now this question is a very important question and this question incorporates the practical understanding it demands the practical understanding or you can say that once you have studied the entire theme of ancient medieval art and culture so here you will have to apply your knowledge right you will have to apply your knowledge the simple knowledge the simple information that you have now this question asks that explain the role of geographical factors towards the development of ancient India. So how we can write the answer of this question within 150 words. So this is the most challenging part for this question because we have to write the answer of this question in 150 words. This theme is very, uh, you can say that broad in nature. You can also write an essay on this. But the most challenging part in UPSC question is that you have to present your idea within the specified words limited words and here the word limit is only 150 words so how we can tackle this question now in this question simply we have to write a simple introduction because there is not much scope of writing so we can write a simple introduction and in the main body main part of your answer in the main body of your answer you can simply relate the geographical factors with the most important development in Indian history. You can relate the geographical factors, you can write different geographical factors and you can establish their relation or linkages with the most important development in ancient India. So this is the demand of the question that we have to write some geographical factors and then we have to establish the linkages of these geographical factors on the development of different events that may be political, social, cultural, religious in ancient India. And lastly, we will write a conclusion and the conclusion must be very simple because we have the most important challenge here to explain our idea within the specified word limit. So simply what we can write. So in introduction part, right, we can simply write here that geographical factors played a vibrant role in shaping the consciousness of ancient India and that is true with any country. The geographical factors play the most important role in shaping the consciousness of ancient India and when we are saying the consciousness of ancient India, it means we are talking about the cultural heritage of ancient India. And when we are talking about the cultural heritage of India, it means simply we are talking about the political achievements also, economic achievements also, social and cultural achievements also, religious achievements also. So this consciousness of a nation indicates all important developments in this field. So simply we can write this introduction. Now in the main body of answer, as I have suggested that we cannot write a lot of things here. So the best thing is that we will present our answer in main body in bullet format, point wise format, you can write your answer and the points must be indicative in nature. There is no scope of writing the entire description of these points. Now in this main body, we can write different points here. So the first point that we are going to write here is Himalayan mountain ranges because Himalayan mountain ranges play a very important role in shaping the history of India. For example, this Himalayan mountain range acted like a natural barrier. So we can write this as a hint indication that yes, it acts like a natural barrier and there are different passes and through these passes invasion of different groups, foreign groups in India took place in India, right? In ancient India. And these different foreign groups were Persian and Macedonians who invaded India during which period? During 600-300 BC period. And then the other important foreign groups in India are Indo-Greeks, Shakas, Pahlavas, 
कुशान राइट सो दीज फॉरन ग्रुप्स इंडो ग्रीक शकाज पहलावाज एंड कुशान ऑल दीज इन्वेजन टू प्लेस ड्यूरिंग लेटर मॉरियन पीरियड राइट एंड फाइनली द हून इन्वेजन ऑल्सो टूक प्लेस सो दिस इन्वेजन हून इन्वेजन टूक प्लेस ड्यूरिंग गुप्ता पीरियड नाउ वाई वी आर राइटिंग हियर अबाउट दीज इन्वेजन बिकॉज दीज एज एज अ रिजल्ट ऑफ दीन इज दीज इन्वेजन राइट वॉट विल हैपन कल्चरल इंटरेक्शन विल टेक प्लेस एंड दिस कल्चरल इंटरेक्शन हैड अ ग्रेट इम्पैक्ट ऑन द डेवलपमेंट ऑफ डिफरेंट स्पेयर्स इन एंसियंट इंडिया so here it is very difficult to write the points of the cultural interaction in detail so that's why we have just suggested a hint that yes we are familiar with these cultural interaction so finally it resulted in what significant cultural interactions for example why we are talking about significant cultural interactions because for example different group of invaders who came to india in ancient india what they did most of them adopted the indian cultural practices and traditions they become indianized right and no doubt in india also we got a lot of knowledge also from these group of invaders but this is the most important and significant event that the group of invaders are indianized for example one very famous dynasty is kushana dynasty in ancient india and that too in later mauryan period and one popular ruler of this dynasty was kanishk i hope all of you are familiar with this name and kanishk had significant achievements in ancient india so simply we can indicate this information that yes kushan right they were the most indianized group so there is no any scope to explain further so you can simply write these things now the second point that we can still write here is that shielding of arctic winds okay you all have studied this in your basic portion basic ncrts in geography that how himalayan mountain seals the arctic winds and what is the result result is what lot of rainfall and if you have sufficient rainfall in your country so that helps in what agriculture prosperity right and due to this agriculture prosperity what will happen economic prosperity will come and due to this economic prosperity urbanization will be promoted and if urbanization will be promoted different urban centers will come into existence and finally we can say that in this way india becomes the cradle of civilizations so we cannot explain each and everything so we can write indicative points in bullet format here so you can give this message to the examiner that yes i am familiar with all the important developments why because the word limit is 150 word so simply we can write shielding of arctic winds lot of rainfall result agriculture prosperity result economic prosperity result urbanization development of urban centers all these are the development in ancient india now the second point that we can explain here is india as a land of rivers again very common information that we all of all of us have. for example we all know there was a very you can say that one of the great civilizations and ancient civilizations of the world was indus valley civilization so this was what a river valley civilization right so it developed in river valley region for example indus valley civilization so india is a land of rivers right for example indus jhelum chenab these rivers are there so this is indus valley civilization harappa mohenjodaro considered as one of the most prosperous and ancient cities now the next point that we can explain is that indus valley civilization indicates what urbanization indus valley civilization indicates what first urbanization in ancient india and then again what we see the second urbanization in ancient india and what is this second urbanization in ancient india so we are talking about 600 300 bc period and in 600 300 bc period what happened right so this culture this culture and second urbanization civilization developed in indo gangetic river valley region so again what we see indo gangetic river valley region in the first part what we see indus river valley region here what we see 
Indo Gangetic River Valley region, and that 600 300 BC period, we see what right state formation, kingdoms, republics, plus rise of new religions like Buddhism, Jainism, and Ajivaka. Buddhism becomes the torchbearer of the world, right? These are the spiritual movements, ethical movements in ancient India. So, definitely, right, these geographical factors play an important role. Now, the third point is that discovery of monsoon by Hippalus. We can also write this point. This question has been asked in optional mains also, and this question already has been asked in prelims also. So we can include this fact and discovery of monsoon. Okay, and again, this will promote what? Okay, so mid-ocean routes. Finally, Indian ports were discovered. Promotion of international trade and commerce, and finally, availability of coastal ports and plains also result in what emergence of powerful empires in south india for example when we say the cholas cheras pandyas the powerful empires in south india so we know the economic prosperity of these states on large scale they promoted architectural development they have significant administrative achievements literary achievements right so this all possible due to economic prosperity right and this economic prosperity comes right with surplus agriculture production as well as the promotion of trade and commerce and these coastal areas play very important role in the promotion of trade and commerce so simply we can indicate here we cannot write the entire story right so we can only indicate this is our limitation and this i have discussed again and again in classes that only what we can do is put some indicative points in bullet format now the third part then we can still relate here is that what will happen geographical discovery is promoted what richness in all spheres right geographical diversity so geographical factors resulted in what geographical diversity very simple point geographical factors will result in what geographical diversity and plus what i told you that due to some geographical factors presence and availability of river river valley region fertile plains rich agricultural surplus indians never faced the scarcity of economic resources right they never faced the scarcity of food grains so what will happen if you don't face the scarcity of the basic economic resources if you don't face the scarcity of important economic resources so what will happen you will avoid conflicts right in order to establish control over these resources for example when we look at the central asian countries right for example the turkish rulers came right arabs came the mughals came so they came from those territories where there were conflicts between different groups in order to establish control over the basic economic resources and here we are very rich and prosperous okay we don't feel the scarcity of resources why due to these geographical factors due to this geographical diversity and that's why we always avoided conflicts india always gave the message of peace to the world this we know and we don't have any insecurity right we have sufficient economic resources so the different foreigner groups who come to india to do trade and commerce indians also always welcomed these different cultural groups in india for example okay 8th century ad 712 arabs established their control over some parts of india in northwest region but you will be surprised to know that before this also indians welcomed arabs right they came here settled in right south india in some coastal areas and indian rulers the local rulers also allowed them to develop mosques for their worshipping practices right so from where this spirit of tolerance is coming from where right this kind of behavior where we are tolerant to different groups not only indians but foreign groups also all the reason for this behavior lies in what geographical factors that are making india rich and prosperous in this context also we see india right golden bird now what we see it resulted in the emergence of india as a spiritual leader in the world definitely we will avoid conflicts right so it 
uh, we uh, just praise to the nation that we are the spiritual leader of the world. For example, ascetic culture developed in India. Look here, on other side, there are different foreign groups, right, who are making raids in different countries to plunder the economic resources. And India was promoting a culture of sacrifice, right? India was promoting a culture of sacrifice. For example, what is Mahatma Buddha's renunciation? It means that Mahatma Buddha promoted the kind of cultural sacrifice. All this is what? Sacrifice, culture of sacrifice, right? Sacrificing something, sacrificing your own interest, right? To promote and secure the interests of the other people of the world, to promote the interest of the humanity. So, this culture of sacrifice means that you don't only consider your family as the world, but you are considering the entire world as a family. So, this is all happening due to geographical factors. Now, the second point, non-violence, these new religions which come into existence, they preach this idea of non-violence, right? India always have a sense of respect. This is ingrained in our Indian cultural heritage and tradition that we respect a pluralistic society. We always respect ethnic and cultural diversity. And finally, right, Vasudheva Kutumbakam, and multiculturalism, Vasudheva Kutumbakam and multiculturalism, we also respect the spirit of these two things, pluralistic society. So, in this way, in India, what happened, a more developed, you can say that, or a more humane psyche was constructed, right? We Indians become liberal, tolerance, India emerged as a Vishwaguru, right? And the basic reason behind all this is what? geographical factors, richness, presence of rivers, lot of rainfall, river valley reason, right? Agricultural surplus, development of different centers that emerged as the urban centers, right? So, in modern India, you all know that before the British came to India, India was much ahead than European countries when it comes to export, export of textile goods. So, this was happening just from the ancient times. IBC people were also familiar with cotton, right? So, in conclusion, since we have limitations, we cannot write a lot of content here. So, simply the points will be indicative in nature. In main body, again, look here, all the points are indicative in nature. We have not explained, elaborated anything. And lastly, we can write a simple conclusion that due to its rich cultural diversity and economic prosperity, Indians also made significant progress in the fields of technology, literature, science and architecture. So, in this way, we can conclude our answer. We don't have much scope to further elaborate these points due to the limitation of, okay, due to this word limit. So, in this way, you can write the answer of the questions that are asked in UPSC may. So, always remember this tip that while writing answer, what you have to do? You have to develop, right? You have to practice so that you could write the answer in bullet format while writing the main body of the answer, right? Thanks to all of you.